The 3D Group Designer is a great new tool to assist you with procedural adding prefabs to your landscape. Welcome to the second video in a series on groups for Landscape Builder 2.0. The Group Designer lets you visually create your metadata for building a scene and it currently works with manual or procedural clearing groups. Let's open the Group Designer to see a completed group. If we click on Refresh in the Landscape Builder Editor window, we can see that the group is procedurally generated, but still abides by the, our rules. Let's add a new group. And we'll give it a name. Set to be manual clearing. Let's move around. Find somewhere to put it. Click on edit clearing positions. And then we'll add it, add one here. It's a little big. Let's just uh, make that a bit smaller, maybe 50 meters across. And we can see we can move it around, or we could uh, resize it. Um, that'll do. So let's save and exit positions. There we go. Now we're just going to uh, move our group to the top of the list. That'll give it priority when placing in the scene over all the other groups and their members. Now we could kind of like add a um, prefab here and then start doing some configuration in the editor window. But let's, um, instead let's just open the group designer. Let's just remove this one. Uh, now just um, just remember to right click and say delete rather than just deleting it uh, with the delete button otherwise that won't um, persist in our metadata. And we can just um, drag and drop things from our uh, project, direct, project panel directly onto the design surface. So maybe we would do something like a tower and then we can just drop him in there. These are just some prefabs I have from the Unity Village demo, but you can use whatever um, prefabs you have in your project. And if you see, I can just click on this, uh, and I can move it around and put it anywhere in my group. I can't go outside the extent of the group. And I can, you know, do the usual kind of stuff like move it up and down. Let's just reset that to snap it back to the ground. Um, you notice I use the uh, context menu here. Um, so I could you know, right click and say uh, reset the position and that'll just set it back in the center of my um, clearing here, my group. So I can also uh, rotate it, rotate it around the Y or the X or Z axis, however I like. Um, let's just reset that rotation and maybe let's set it to the pivot. And then when I rotate it, it'll rotate around my pivot on the ground. This depends on how you have your prefab set up. Now, you'll notice if I click on scale, nothing can happen to my scale handle um, tool doesn't come up. And that's because at the moment scale is being set at the group level. So all, all members I add to this group. So if I just was to drop in maybe 
you know, something like uh, maybe like this small house here. Oops. And if I go to my group um, default and I start scaling things, you'll see, you know, things start scaling uh, up and down. But both of them are doing the same thing. So that might be what I'm after. But in this particular case, I'd like to scale this um, tower independently to uh, this little house here. So I'm just going to right click and I'm going to say, I'm going to say override group. And then I should be able to scale my um, tower independently. We can turn on or off display guides that show what influences placement in the scene. For instance, at the moment I have uh, member extent proximity turned on, but I can turn on like tree, member tree proximity. That shows me how close trees can be, the unity terrain trees can be to this tower. And I can change that in inspector here. Let's just turn that off for a moment and let's have a look at general proximity. So to demonstrate that let's let me just add in maybe another prefab here. Oops. And you'll notice that when I click on a prefab, it gets highlighted in the inspector. So I know which one I'm looking at. So for proximity, maybe I make that a little bit bigger. And for this one, let's just adjust this proximity a bit. And you'll see that as I, oh, look, it just disappeared. So that's because it's exceeding the proximity of this item. And you might sort of wonder, well, why is my tower disappearing? And that's because of priority in my, in my members list here. So if I was to, say, increase, make my my um, my barracks here lower priority or move it down the list so let's just do that and then I can change the the extent of this one you'll see that the barracks disappears but my um, my tower remains now let's turn off place in center and you'll notice it suddenly jumped to a different position. Now if we refresh the group a few times, you'll see it's being randomly placed now. If we increase the maximum per square hectare, uh, we'll see more appear. So yeah, we could just kind of increase this a little. There we go. Um, with a diameter of 100 metres, our group is exactly one hectare. So we'd expect five um, to appear, given that's what we've put in. Sometimes we may wish to create a variable size group from, say, 50 metres to the radius to, say, 100 metres. However, we may only ever want to have five of these towers in any, any village. If that's the case, we'd set the maximum clearing value to five. Okay, so that would force force landscape builder to restrict the number that appeared in any one village. For now, I'm just going to put it back to the default. Within a group, we can place objects in a circular or rectangular zones, which further restrict where a prefab can be placed. So if I turn on my zone display and go up to zones at the group level. 
let's just add a new zone and let's just resize it so we can see where it's going and maybe move it over here a little bit and then I'm going to add my my zone restriction to my towers there we go and if I move my zone around the towers will move with it and I can also choose to say make it a rectangle instead and maybe change the width a bit and or I can do a knot so I can say put my towers everywhere except for in my zone come over my zone and refresh so if I move my zone around a bit more change a bank to or and we can have multiple zones but I'm not going to go into a lot of detail uh, around zones or proximity because we have separate videos coming on those so let's just clean up by removing our zone Just remove this tower and maybe add a small house in here okay let's just uh, maybe just turn off place in the center and we can see if we increase that we will have a few more of them in the scene let's have a look at rotation now currently they're all rotated in one direction if we were to turn on uh, go to rotation and turn on randomize Y rotation you'll see well we can refresh this a few times and items uh, the houses are refreshed all over the place Maybe we could increase proximity a little bit so they don't all run over each other A bit better. So if we refresh it, now we can also restrict uh, the amount of rotation. So if I go down to uh, my XY and let's look at so start and end rotation, I could maybe so if I change that amount of rotation, you'll see. Uh, things change around and I can only um, the rotation will only occur within the parameters I say let's just reset that reset rotation okay now maybe I want all of these to appear facing the center so let's just turn off random rotation at the moment and I'll zoom in a little bit so we can see what's going on. Okay, now if I right click and say uh, set my rotation to face center. Okay, so now they're all facing the center but the wrong way. I want my doors facing inwards. So let's just uh, change the rotation to 180 okay so now all my doors are facing towards the center and I can again just reset that and they'll always be facing the center of the, the group okay now they look a little bit symmetrical at the moment all facing the same place so I could turn on random rotation again and this time I'm going to restrict the rotation between, I don't know, maybe 170, maybe 170 and 190. Okay, so they're all looking a little slightly less uh, symmetrical. Now you can play around with that however you like. 
Well, that's the basic overview of the key features of the 3D Group Designer. Look out for other videos in our Landscape Builder Group series. And thank you for watching.